guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. So I'm going to do another video in my Perfect Neutral Eye series, and today I'm using the Lorac Unzipped Palette. This is the original one, not the gold one. And um, I'm using several of the shades in here to create this warm, rosy, neutral, maybe slightly smoky neutral eye, <laughs> you could say. But I really, I love this palette. I haven't pulled it out in quite some time, and a number of you are interested in a perfect neutral eye with this one. So here it is. Let's go ahead and get into the video. As always, everything else that I used on my face will be listed down below. So let's jump in the tutorial, and um, yeah, so see you guys without eye makeup in a second. Okay, so in the interest of just doing something different, I don't have either eye done today. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and complete the look over on my left eye so that you guys can see that and then I will do the other eye off camera afterwards. So um, bust out your Lorac unzipped palette. This is the original. It is not the gold. And um, since the shadows are labeled in here, I'm going to go ahead and just tell you guys what I'm putting on my eyes instead of lifting the shadow up and showing you each time. So. I do already have obviously the rest of my makeup done that will all be listed down below for you and I already have um, my eye primer on which is really the most important thing here. I'm a firm believer in eyeshadow primers because I have really oily eyelids and they work like a charm. My favorite is the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. Okay, I'm going to take just a simple fluffy brush. This one happens to be from Sonia Kasha from a limited edition collection a long time ago. And I'm going in the color Undercover, which is the lightest color in the shade, and I'm using that as a base. So I'm just putting that down on my lid, and then also working a little bit of that up to my brow area. This is just going to help the other shadows not necessarily stick to that primer as heavily and um, help everything blend out. Hoping I'm in frame here. <laughs> okay, I am going to bring a little bit of that down. Next, I'm going to take a blending brush, and um, this is the E25 from Sigma, and I'm going to go into the color. You know what? I'm going to actually no, sorry. I'm taking a fluffier blending brush first, and I'm going in the color Unconditional. And I'm just going to load a little bit of that on there and then tap off the excess and take that into the crease as my transition shade. I'm focusing the majority of that color on the outer portion of my um, eyes and then working what's left into the inner corner of my eye. This brush is getting really scratchy. I really need to replace it. Um, I need to replace all of my eye brushes actually that are from Sigma so I don't recommend this one it's pretty scratchy honestly but you know investing in brushes is like such an ordeal it's so expensive <laughs> um, so yeah pick something that's much softer than what I'm using here all right so now that I have that in my crease I'm also going to take a flat shader brush and I'm just talking about one like this. It's flat definer brush, I suppose. I'm gonna go into that same color, unconditional, tap off the excess, and also put that underneath my lower lash line. I don't want a heavy shadow look down there, but I just want a little bit of definition. And also connect it in the corner there. Then I'm going to take that blending brush, the E25, and I'm going to go in the color Unspoken. And again, tap off the excess. I'm trying to avoid a lot of fallout here, but I am gonna get some. And again, this is going in the crease, but it's much more concentrated because these bristles aren't quite so fluffy. I'm gonna place that where I want it first, and then work the rest of it into the inner part of the eye. Keeping that much more like in the actual crease area versus going above the crease. 
your eye shape your eye shape may differ so you'll have to adjust this based on you know your particular eye shape Then I'm going to take a little bit more of that unspoken and put that onto the actual like lid on the outer portion of the eye. Take a fluffy brush and brush off your excess. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take a combination of the colors Unbelievable and Unreal, which are these two shades right here. I find that I get the best color payoff with these um, and like foiled metallic type finish from these if I use my fingers. I really don't like using my fingers to put on my eyeshadows, but sometimes that really is what works best. So I'm going to take a combination of those two, starting with the Unbelievable first, which is just a really pretty rose gold shade, and then also go into the Unreal at the same time, and then put that on my lid. I'm focusing it more on the middle to inner portion of my eyelid. Sorry, my fat fingers are probably getting in the way. I'm trying to show you guys how I'm doing this but I'm just sort of like patting it onto the lid. You can always go back and get a little bit more and just keep patting that on there. You might automatically get a little bit on your lower lash line here on the inner corner, which is fine. If you want to leave that, go ahead and leave it. Otherwise you can take a Q-tip and wipe it away. Then back into um, the unspoken color to darken up the outer corner again. Because I don't want that shimmer to go all the way to the outer portion. I want to keep it concentrated more towards the middle and inner portion of my eye. This is a little bit smokier than most of my everyday neutral eyes, but I still think it's wearable. Um, you know, if you were going to like a summer like baby shower or something, I think you could totally wear this during the day and still get away with it. There we go. So that is the shadow pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and go in with unconditional just one more time to make that gradient a little bit smoother. And I'm using that fluffier brush to do that. So this is again just to make sure everything's really nicely blended and you have that nice gradient. And my eye is starting to water, of course it is. Next I'm going to take a liner and I'm just using a really nice deep dark brown and this is the, this is written in black on a really dark brown pencil so it's hard to read. This is Brown Perfection from NYX. Um, I will of course link everything down below. And someone had asked me to show how I do my liner, how I actually apply it. So I'll do it, but I honestly, like it's really hard for me to show you guys because my hand is going to get in the way. But essentially I just, I have a shape that I prefer, which is almost like a cat eye without the wing. So I like the outer most part of my liner to be wider. I don't do a wing because I just don't think it looks right on me. And then as I go in towards the inner part of my lash line there, I thin it out until it's basically almost non-existent by the time I get to like the beginning of my lash line. This liner is really smooth and creamy, so it works really well. But that's essentially it. This is this is all that I do. So I try to make sure that it's mostly like, you know, even. <laughs> A lot of times I do go in and I'll 
I'll show you what I do here next and that helps to take care of any like jaggedness. I'll go in with that definer brush again and I'm going to use the darkest shade in here which is untamed. It's this color right here. I'm going to put a little bit of that shadow on there. Tap off a lot of that excess and then go over the liner to not only deepen it up just a little bit but to also again like blend the edges of that liner. It's really easy to do this when you have a creamy pencil because you can just get in there before it really sets and take care of this part. I have all sorts of fallout on my cheeks right now. Take a Q-tip that I just threw in the air. <laughs> Fix anything that needs fixing. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead, turn the camera off do this eye for you and show you guys what the finished look looks like. Alright guys, so here is the finished look all said and done. So again, it's just a little bit darker than what I typically do for just an everyday neutral eye look. But um, I really, I like the way that it looks with my green eyes. I think that rose gold and those kind of warm rosy browns look really great on green eyes as well as blue eyes. But obviously you could wear this with, you know, any color of eyes. So um, really love this palette. It's definitely an oldie but a goodie for me. Um, you know, I've never had an interest in picking up the unzipped gold, but I'm sure that you could create probably something very similar if you have that one instead. So uh, yeah, just really like this a lot. Not liking my hair today, but... <laughs> besides the point. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial. Leave me any questions down below and um, yeah, please subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.